Okay, question number six from sample assessment paper for the Pure Mathematics 3 P3 International A-Level paper. Okay, so in this question we have um, a question asking us about different aspects of functions. And they've given us two functions, one of them f of x, it, which is e to the power of x plus 2, which is defined for all real values of x. There's no restriction to its domain. Okay, and we have the other function g of x, which is given by lin x, which is forced to be defined for x is greater than 0, because you cannot have the lin of, a, of 0 or a negative number. Okay, it would be undefined. So there, there's, this has to, there has to be written, um, otherwise this will not be a function. A function has to be defined for all values of x. Okay, so if there's any values of x for which is not defined, they must be stated. So they're forced to write this. Okay, now saying state the range of the function f. Okay, that's a pretty simple question. It's only worth one mark, and all you have to do is write down the answer. Okay, which happens to be y is greater than two. Now let me explain why that is the answer. Okay, now that is the answer. Okay, because when we are dealing with the range of functions, we're trying to find all the values that it can take on the y all the y values you can take okay on the vertical axis let me just so i find the easiest way to deal with functions is to or range of functions is to actually make a sketch now if we make a sketch of this function now e to the power of x itself will look something like this without the two part we'll go through zero one and it has an asymptote at uh, the x-axis which is y equals zero it will never uh, touch the x-axis get closer and closer to it now, what this means is this is like f of x plus 2. So all the x values remain as they are, and all the y values are, you add 2 to them. So basically, it looks like it's a vertical trans translation. Where everything moves up by two spaces. So instead of going through 0, 1, okay, it's now going to go through 0, 3. Okay, and instead of the asymptote or the part that it can't ever reach, being um, x, uh, y equals 0, it's now going to be y equals 2. So what's going to happen is the asymptote is going to be y equals 2. Okay, so that's... So basically we can see from that it will, that this graph will never reach 2. It will always be above 2 on the y. So y value will always be above 2. Okay, it can, it's not possible for it to get to 2 or below. So that means the range of the function f is y is greater than 2. You could write f of x is greater than 2, and that's perfectly fine. But don't put the equal sign, otherwise you'll be wrong. Now, find f g of x, giving your answer in its simplest form. Okay, f g of x is a composite function, where you have to take the, the function g, the one that's mentioned second, and put it inside the function f, which is mentioned before it. So we've got to take the function g x, which is lin x, and replace the x in function f with lin x. So you've got to do this. Okay, so remember the function f of x is e to the power of x plus 2. So you take e to the power of, instead of x, you're going to write lin x. So you replace the x with whatever the function g is. Okay, plus 2. Okay, so that's the function f with the x replaced with lin x. Now, e to the power of lin x is actually x. So your answer becomes x plus 2. Now, why is e to the power of lin x equal to just x? Well, we should know from our understanding of functions that if you have a composite function of an inverse function with the original function either way around, it doesn't matter which way around it is, you will always get whatever's in the bracket. They cancel each other out, basically. They can't, when, you, when you make a composite function with the original, they cancel each other out. And you're left with whatever's here inside the bracket, okay? Um, and let me just show you, I mean, this is fine for my answer, and th those two marks we got just by showing this, this line here, but I just want to show for those of you who might not be quite clear on this, how um, e to the power of lin x is equal to x. So let me first say, let, let me call y e to the power of lin x. And let's take the logs of both sides. Let's take the log to the base e of both sides. So we say lin y is equal to, okay, I'll just do it the long way so that you understand what's going on, lin e to the power of lin x. Okay, it's just taking the log of both sides. So that leads to us getting lin y is equal to lin x times lin e. Now lin e is equal to 1. Okay, because it means log to the base e, e 
which is equal to 1. e to the power of 1 is e. That's what ln means. It basically means this. Log to the base of the natural number. e is called the natural number. So this gives you 1. So that, therefore, lin y is equal to lin x times 1, which is just lin x. So if lin y is equal to uh, lin x, they're both equal, then those y, that y and the x must be the same thing. So if y is equal to x, then this is also equal to x. So e lin x is equal to x. Okay, that's just a proof for that part, which is not necessary for us to write down. This is just for those people who maybe have some doubts as to why that, that this thing here becomes just x and then plus 2. Okay, then it says find the exact value of x for which f of x, f of 2x plus 3 is equal to 6. So we know that f of x is equal to e to the power of x plus 2. And what this means is, first of all, you want to replace the x in the function f of x with 2x plus 3. So that will be e to the power of, instead of x, 2x plus 3, okay, plus 2. That's taking this function and replacing the x with 2x plus 3, and then make that equal to 6. So you have e to the power of 2x plus 3 plus 2 is equal to 6. So you've got to solve this for x, find the value of x, the exact value of x. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So e to the power of 2, two e to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 6 minus 2, which is 4. Then I'm going to take the lin of both sides, so I can solve this exponential equation. So I'm going to get 2x plus 3 is equal to lin 4. And then I'm going to solve for x, so I'll subtract 3. So I have 2x equals minus 3 plus lin 4. And then I can find what x is x is equal to minus 3 plus lin 4 all over 2. Now that's perfectly fine if I leave my answer like that. Okay? There's no problem because it didn't tell me to put it in a particular form. But if you wanted to put it as separate terms, for example, you put minus 3 over 2 plus a half lin 4, which can be simplified further, which is minus 3 over 2 plus, now a half lin 4 means lin 4, to the power of a half, which is actually 2. So you could write x equals minus 3 over 2 plus lin 2 if you want. Okay, so that's perfectly fine as your answer. And that's perfectly fine as your answer as well. Okay, there's no problem if you express it in either way. Because basically, um, they didn't mention any particular form. They said give the exact value. Okay, so this is an exact value. This is an exact value. And so it's perfectly fine. I just hear you have one fraction here, you have separate terms. Okay, but if you do do separate terms, it's better for you to simplify the, the lin part as much as possible, which we've done there. Okay, so there we have uh, question C. And then going on to part D. What does part D say? Turn over the page. It says, find the inverse of F stating its domain. So remember, F of X is equal to... Whoops f of x is equal to, let me just, it's a bit messy, just lagged for a little while, so f of x is equal to e to the power of x plus 2. Now, to find the inverse of a function, the first thing I do is I change the f of x and call it y equals, so y equals e to the power of x plus 2. And the second thing I do is I replace the x and the y Okay, so y, instead of y, I write x. Instead of x, I write y. Okay, that's because when you're finding the inverse function, you're basically x-axis becomes a y-axis and the y-axis becomes x-axis. And the third step is to make y the subject. So to make y the subject, first thing I'll do is I will subtract 2 from both sides. And then what I will do is I will take the, the lin of both sides. Let me just move this down a bit so that I've got a bit of space. I'm going to take the lin of both sides. So I have lin of x minus 2 equals, and this is going to become y times lin e, which is y. Okay? So I end up with y is equal to the lin of x minus 2. Now it says state the domain of this function. Now we know that the lin of anything can never be z less 0 or less. It has to always be greater than or equal to 0. So I know that x minus 2 must always be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, x must be greater than 0. So that is the domain of the function. And, well, sorry. Silly me. The domain x must be greater than 2. Because I have to add 2 to both sides. So the domain of this function is x is greater than 2. As long as x is greater than 2, this will never be 0 or less than 0. 
And what's, what you have to also note is that the domain of the function, um, of the inverse function, is the same as the range of the original function. So the range of our original function was y is greater than 2. And the domain of our function is x is greater than 2. Of our inverse function is x is greater than 2. So it's always the case, okay? It's always the case that the range of the original function and the domain of the inverse function are the same and vice versa. Okay, part E. On the same axis, sketch the curves with the equation y equals f of x and y is equal to the inverse of f of x, giving the coordinates of the points, all the points where the curve crosses, the curves cross the axes. Okay, so let's start by having a look at the two equations. One is y equals e to the power of x plus 2, and the other one is y equals the lin of x minus 2. Those were the two functions that we have to now draw. Let's start with the first one. We've actually drawn it already in the, on the other page, just when I was explaining to you. So let me just um, draw it a bit more, slightly neater and bigger. So here we have your y and your x-axis. Okay, so that's your y-axis, and that's your x-axis. That's your origin. And y equals e to the power of x plus 2, as we said, it's going to cut the, it's going, there's going to be like a place, a line that it doesn't um, pass through, and that's going to be at y equals 2. And it's going to cut through the point y equals 3. So it's going to go something like this. Let me just start it up a bit weird there. It's going to curve upwards, it's going to hit 3, it's going to go up. And this is y equals e to the power of x plus 2. Okay, now the inverse function, y equals ln x minus 2. As you can see, this is the asymptote y equals 2. What happens in the inverse function is basically the, the, the x and y coordinates, they swap over. So if one goes through 0, 3, then the inverse will go through 3, 0. If y equals 2 is the asymptote of this one, then x equals 2 will be the asymptote of this one. Okay, so let's just say this is 3, and just say this is 2. Okay, so you have, you're going to have your asymptote going through 2. Let me draw this dotted line. Okay, it's going to go through 2. Okay, that's the asymptote, and the curve for Linux is going to basically go like this. It's going to get closer and closer to the line 2 when y is negative, and it's going to go through 3, it's going to go up, something like that. So that's y is equal to the lin of x minus 2. Okay, so that's how uh, this particular curve uh, we'll look, and as you can see, if we were to draw the line y equals x, okay, then these, if I did it properly, it's not really that much to scale. They're reflections of each other in y equals x because, you know, we change the y's, the x's for the y's and vice versa. Okay, so that's the sketch of the um, y e to the power of x plus 2, and that's the sketch of the inverse function. Okay, so this is, this is like f of x, and this is y equals the inverse of f of x. Okay, so we've, we've done what we're asked to do. Give the coordinates of all the points with the curve crosses the axis. So I've given the coordinates of this point. This is 3, 0, and this is 0, 3. Okay, and um, that's the end of that question. Um, there's nothing else. They didn't even tell us to write their asymptotes, but we did it as well. Okay, there we have it. That's the end of question number 6.